Hello everyone, I'm Wendell Jones and welcome to this edition of the program, The Platform. On this program we look at the national issues of the Bahamas and uh, today on our program we are going to be talking about something that most Bahamians should know about. Bahamas Power and Light, that company is a company in the Bahamas that is regulated by the company called IRCA and you know what IRCA is all about. The Utilities Regulation uh, Authority and today on our program we have two of the managers of IRCA, indeed the Director of Utilities and Energy, Siobhan Cambridge and he is accompanied by Mavis Colley who is the Manager of Corporate and Consumer Affairs at IRCA and uh, they are here to promote a plan or to discuss a plan for BPL. Uh, Mr. Cambridge, welcome. Thank you for having us Mr. Jones. Nice to see you. We have not met before but uh, now you are officially introduced to the public. Hey? Okay. Um, uh, <laughs> how long have you been with IRCA? Uh, I've been at IRCA now about six months. Six yes. months. Okay. Yeah. Uh, maybe this is always good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. My, good afternoon. My beloved cousin. <laughs> nice to see you. Godfrey Ines, nice to see you here. You know, <clears throat> Mr. Cambridge here just reminded me that you're an old man, yeah. that he went to school with your son. <laughs> okay, uh, very good. Um, Mr. Cambridge, um, in your capacity of direct, as Director of Utilities and Energy, uh, what uh, do you do? Okay, basically what I do is that um, as a result of the changes in the Electricity Act 2015, mm. uh, IRCA got the regulatory um, remit for dealing with the energy sector in the Bahamas. So I'm in the process of setting up all of the framework for the monitoring and for the licensing and everything to do with the energy sector. And one of the things that we are looking at is the Consumer Protection Plan, which is the item that we're here to discuss yes. more today and to introduce to the public. Yeah. And the Consumer Protection Plan, as I um, notice, is a very detailed document. It is very comprehensive, isn't it? Uh, yes, the document actually, basically all public electricity supplier licensees will be required to formulate and, and put forward a consumer protection plan. And basically that outlines the standards that they agree that they will be held to in terms of their relationship with their consumers. Okay, so, so IRCA is not putting together the plan. Are the, the company is putting together the plan? Well, they put together a proposal. Well, they put together the plan in consultation with IRCA. Like right. This would be the second iteration of the plan. They would have given us a preliminary proposal, uh, which we would have reviewed and given them some feedback on. Uh, that is then assessed against some of the best practices and benchmark against other utilities of any particular licensee size and characteristics. And then we send that back to them for them to finalize it and then we go to public consultation with that document so that all of the stakeholders will then have their say as to how they feel that document uh, represents their needs and issues and whether it would allow for proper governance or outlining the relationship that they should have with the licensee. So IRCA is a supra agency, isn't it? Dealing with telecommunications, broadcasting, uh, now um, electricity, you are a super agency. And, and let's talk about the capacity of IRCA to do all of these things that you do. Well, basically, as you will recall, IRCA was established by an act of parliament back in 2009 uh, as the independent regulator for utilities, uh, with initial remit to regulate the um, electronic communication sector, which, as you mentioned, alluded to, encompasses telecommunications, broadcasting, internet, broadband, pay, pay TV. Uh, we manage, we don't regularly manage spectrum uh, as a national resource that's managed by, currently by the Prime Minister. Now, in terms of, that's sorry, regulated by the Prime Minister, we managed it. In terms of this new remit, uh, utilities uh, and energy in terms of electricity, uh, we were given that mandate in December of 2015 um, through an act of parliament, the Electricity Act, and various amendments 
uh, to the IRCA Act to enable it to uh, be the regulator for electricity. Um, by our very name, utilities and mm -hmm. competition, uh, it is envisioned that we will have added to our remit uh, the uh, regulatory um, remit for certain utilities. The first one, Beans. electricity, um, we anticipate that maybe water and so which may yeah, also yeah. come along. Um, so yes, we are an independent regulator with quite a, uh -huh, a the large you mandate. Have the capacity to do all of these things in terms of your staffing, uh, in terms of the the level of professionalism um, in in IRCA. Uh, the people who you employ, do you have the capacity there to do all of this? I'll that speak the generally and to then um, mm -hmm. I'll let um, Siobhan speak specific, specifically to energy the energy sector. Uh, IRCA builds its capacity as <coughs> the uh, responsibilities are added. And while uh, there may be areas and vacancies we, where we don't have the necessary resources internally. Uh, we do consult um, to ensure that we are able to uh, keep up with technology, to keep up with best practices, to ensure that our people have the capacity. We do a lot of training. <laughs> our persons are involved in training internationally to ensure that they are on top of whatever is the newest technology in whatever area that we are um, currently responsible for regulating. Uh, for example, when we introduced number portability, we ensure that the resources were available to assist IRCA. So we do uh, have the capacity to uh, outsource some of the, uh, the research and some of the uh, expert knowledge that we need uh, to have in order to regulate the so various that, that is a sectors. long yes answer. <laughs> yes, we do have the capacity. Um, so, Godfrey, she says she does have the capacity. Took her, took her about five minutes to say it, but go ahead. Yes. My, my question, <coughs> excuse me, my question is primarily to Mr. Cambridge. Energy. Okay. It's a big issue in our country. Right. And it's, it impacts <coughs> our competitiveness as a tourism destination high cost of electricity in hotels, it impact our standard of living and cost of living. However, we've been slow in adopting certain renewable energy technology, all right? One of which is solar energy. Okay. And all over the world, people are using solar energy. And I tell people, and they wonder why the, all the sun that we have in the Bahamas, why don't we have solar energy. Let me finish now. Okay. Right? Solar energy is in, in, in some places have eliminated, Mr. Cambridge, the cost of electricity for the homeowner. The power companies now have to pay homeowners for the use of the electricity which is generated back to the grid. Right? Yet we in this country are e on and years behind. Okay, but I'm glad you would have brought that up. Uh, actually, one of the things that we've done in the short time that I've been at IRCA is that we've launched our small scale renewable generation program. Uh, the information pertaining to that can be found on IRCA's website. Which Never is, heard of it. You heard of it, Mr. Jones? Um, no. Actually, it's the tagline on most of the dailies uh, for the last couple of months. And uh, as I was saying, the information is available on our website at ircabahamas.bs. And we're currently accepting applications uh, through BPL for residential scale solar and for small commercial, the applications come through IRCA. And we're also in the process right now of working on developing the second phase of that program which deals more with the IPP or independent power producers and utility scale levels of, of solar. Have you, have you identified uh, qualified suppliers of this, of, this, of, of this technology to make sure that the public doesn't get robbed? Well, the small scale solar is done on a personal consumer basis, on a request basis, and that has to do with the consumer doing a bit of self-generation and any excess that their system provides is then allowed to feed back into the grid. 
Um, and there is a rate that has been developed for that in the interim. It's the displaced fuel charge. Um, but we're also doing a net billing study, which will then go and allow us to determine what the true avoided cost is to the utility to allow the consumer to be compensated at that rate for his or her own installation. Um, as far as the IPP and utility scale level go, like I said, we're still working out the regulatory framework for that. And for most of that, that will probably be done through a competitive bidding type process. You know, Mr. Cambridge, the bottom line is people want to know that yes. they have lower uh, costs mm -hmm. for electricity in the Bahamas, that they are not being robbed. Mm -hmm. uh, and and he, hence your mm -hmm. consumer mm -hmm. protection plan, right? Right. Um, all of the technical things, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. average man on the street, the average person watching this show tonight, yeah. they're interested in that. Yeah, all right. they're, they, they want to know whether or not IRCA has a plan mm -hmm. to ensure that they're not paying higher rates than they should, mm -hmm. uh, that they are protected by IRCA. Mm -hmm. Speak to that. Well, just to address the, the pricing aspect of it, the Electricity Act of 2015, which um, gave us the authority to um, regulate uh, the electricity, uh, had a rider. And in that, we, the current price uh, cannot be uh, adjusted or influenced or recommended for adjustment by IRCA uh, for, I think it's five years. Five years. Uh, and so, what the current pricing of electricity, mm. uh, we cannot go in and change or say it's too high, it's too low, uh, based for on years. for five years. Mm -hmm. why, why five, five years? years? Well, that you'll have to uh, go but, back but, but, to the legislators and ask them that question. No, but you have the remit, um, so you need to tell us why. It, it, for five years, we cannot say anything about whatever BPL is going to charge. Uh, to the well, but we won't say that you cannot say anything. We, 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 can, we can say something, <laughs> but you you cannot do anything. Like you cannot wrong. change whatever rate they they are uh, uh, charging. Extended well, I think with the, with the rollout with the Electricity Act and the amendments to the IRCA Act and all that that took place in 2015, 2016, uh, it's my understanding that a tariff study would have been done at that time, and then the rates were fixed based on the findings of that study for the next five years. But Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. 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 Cambridge. Our electricity in this country is generated by fossil fuel. Yes. That fluctuates on the global market. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is now, whatever price, regardless of what the fluctuation is. No, no, the, the fuel charge will uh, allows to fluctuate. The fuel charge is actually a pass-through, a direct pass-through. Oh, the, the rate, <laughs> the, the, public the is current paid. rate is set by BPL. Yes. Or the well, but, but, but let me ask you too, do you have the uh, remit to deal with the Grand Bahama Power Company? I will allow me to talk on that. Because we, that is in the Freeport area. Do, do, do you have remit to, to really regulate them? We are, re we are currently uh, reviewing all of the legal ramifications uh, that concerns the Grand Bahama Power, Authority, um, Power Plant. Um, and IRCA's responsibility, and uh, as it also relates to the Grand Mama Port Authority. Uh, and so that is something that so, we're so currently the, uh, dealing with legally. So the Grand Mama Port Authority is a separate state in the Bahamas then? That's what you're saying. I, I, I think that the issues concerning the Grand Mama Port Authority. They're ongoing negotiations. If you said that the, 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 the Parliament passed a law, and I presume that law binds everybody in the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. And all, say, all of the utility of right. But now what you're saying now, because Freeport, then Freeport must be a separate state if the Bahamian laws don't bind them. Well, I think the Electricity Act speaks to IRCA um, giving consideration to the role of, of the Grand Bahama Port Authority with regards to GBPC. Um, and so there are ongoing negotiations right now as to how that final regulation, regulatory responsibility will be met out. Okay. Do you know, do you wait, let me make this point. Do you know the people in Spanish Wells, right? Mm -hmm. Have no electricity system? Yes. And they're that, 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 that same thing applied to them too? 
but they're considered to be a public electricity supply a licensee and, so they and, and they would lights. fall under the regulatory um, regime, regime. they've been licensed by IRCA uh, they, they're going through the process as well right so now. so yeah. none of them are licensed by IRCA right now no no utility yeah. company uh, to provide electricity BPLS. yes BPL just BPL and the others uh, it's an ongoing phase right now we're going through the whole licensing uh, process um, and we're actually finalizing licenses for the various levels of PESLs. So it has to do more or less with the the levels are determined by um, the amount of consumers and, and, and your capacity and, and everything else. And then there are hybrids or variations of that that deal with people. The, the fully integrated utility does generate, transmit, distribute, and supply. Then there are different categories of licensees who would some would just generate, some transmit and distribute. Um, and so right now in terms of the full PESL or GTDS, Generation Transmission Distribution Supply licensees, uh, the individuals or the utilities that would be under consideration are BPL, GBPC, um, St. George's Power, uh, and I think that's, did I miss any Mavis? Yeah, uh, yeah. Mr. Kimmich, let me yeah. ask you, if, if I have a complaint now mm -hmm. uh, 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 about the provision of electricity to my operation by BPL, yes. do I come to you now? Can or I do I have to wait for a couple of years? No, you well, don't have to wait no, for no. a couple of years. What, and as we said initially, we are currently consulting on the Consumer Protection Plan, yes, which, which will provide that a detailed process for the management of complaints concerning uh, supplies of electricity, in particular BPL. Mm -hmm. In the absence of that document, depending on the nature of your complaint, you can make that complaint to ERCO. We will intercede on your behalf with BPL, or you can go directly to BPL, or we will refer you to BPL. Because with, in the absence of a finalized plan, we do not have the complete process in place as to exactly what the expectations or the outcome right. of your complaint should and would be. That is the process that we have launched. Okay. Uh, and just, I know, um, Godfrey, you mentioned that uh, you inquired about the availability of certain information to the public. Everything that ERCA does in terms of its documentation it's public. is public. Oh, yeah. It's on this website. Now, to make sure that you get access or you get notification, we invite you to register on the website, which means that automatically you receive updates as we update the website. Uh, all of our media outlets, especially our major ones, including the Bahama Journal, we make sure we send them our releases on certain major matters, such as a renewable uh, document that will have been sent, renewable energy document that will have been sent to all of the media houses. Most of them would have carried the story. We invite the reporters and the media to contact us when they need further information or for explanation as to exactly uh, what is contained, because the documents sometimes are technical, sometimes we can break them down, and sometimes because of the nature of the documents, we have to leave them in their original form and state. But we want to ensure that the public understands that this exercise that we are going through is very critical to them understanding what they can expect or what they should expect, what they want from their um, provider of electricity oh, okay. service. Let, let, let's take a break. I have a number of questions <laughs> arising from what you just said. Uh, let, let's take this break here on our program. And uh, we are speaking with these two executives from IRCA, uh, Mr. Sharon Cambridge and Mavis Colley. We'll come right back. Uh -huh.